Hi, this is Elaine Lessig on behalf of the Canine Chronicle. Today, back with you with another episode of Closet Confidential. Okay, ladies and gentlemen out there. So we were a big hit with an episode with this little eye candy, and I understand we can't get enough. <laughs> so, as <laughs> make everybody happy, here we go again. Michael Hill and I will be joined by three of our four guests from last week. Unfortunately, Remy, he has to work. And that's life, and we're just going to have to be missing him very, very much. And if he should happen to knock at the door, we're going to let him into the closet, because why not? So, Michael, why don't you start off with some of the interesting things we have to talk about today? And by the way, gentlemen, you are all looking very spiffy. I'm impressed. Oh, why, thank you, Elaine. So we have a couple more questions. We're just going to run through the group and get some different opinions. Like you said last week, there's no right or wrong answer. We're just looking to kind of flush out some of the inner workings of how some of the men in the dog world think about their appearance. So we're our you first guys, question. Be alert because my first question is <laughs> to you in random order. All right. Our first question is going to be, and this is something I relate to personally, how can I manage heavy sweating in my suit running around at a dog show? <clears throat> I will go ahead and ask Peter to answer that question first. Peter Kubax. I honestly... I'm just going to say you're going to have to sweat it out. I mean, if we're, we're running around, and if it's a hot day outside, we're in suits, shirts, running around in the sun, you're going to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> a good antiperspirant deodorant, that z powder that Elaine showed last week is actually Fabulous good. I, I do use it myself, um, but... I don't really, I don't have a tip for that. Maybe Diego and Phil and their experience have something, but. Oh, that's a polite way of saying the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Why don't we ask them, them then? Bill, what's your answer for that? Peter, Peter, I thought Peter had ice water running through his veins. He's been doing this so long. <laughs> I, I didn't even know Peter sweat. Um, yeah, yeah, he's right, though. You, you just got to get through it. Um, it, it does bring up a, a topic or a little thing that I've always thought, you know, in the hot summer outdoor shows, I, I, I understand the respect for the event. I understand the tie and the coat, but, but I, I also think there should be some practicality involved at times, you know, I mean, an, a nice Absolutely. collared shirt and a pair of slacks uh, and a sport coat without a tie will get you into any country club in the United States. <laughs> so um, I, I, I kind of go by that rule of thumb. If you can get in a good restaurant or country club, why not be able to show your dog? But and you'd absolutely. be welcomed in my ring in that kind of apparel. I, I almost would appreciate it more. And if the golf shirt was enough and, you yeah. know, it was it stinky hot like it is right here in New Jersey, I but wouldn't I do have, But I, I do have to give credit where credit is due. Um, years ago, I mean many, I, I don't even remember – how many? Because Mr. Cantalizo, I believe, was still showing dogs. And uh, <laughs> he just never looked like he sweat a lot, you know, and running with those Afghans. And I asked him one time, he was in Ohio. I said, what are you doing? And I never was a T-shirt guy. I, I never wore T-shirts. And he said, you have to wear a T-shirt. He said, almost, it's like a wicking <laughs> effect. And, yep. and it really does keep you cool. So ever since then, I've been a T-shirt guy at the dog show. Yeah, uh, that would help. Undershirt. And, and, they, and that does help. It does help a lot. Oh, that's good to know. What about you, Diego? Any tricks? No, I know. I know. Here, for the first time I came, I was like eighteen years, eighteen years old, and I noticed in the United States that that it was a lot of hunters. They were wearing like white t-shirts inside. You know what I mean? And then you have your shirt and that. And I really tried once, and I was like ready to panic attack. <laughs> Don't go. I say My no, no. Be keeping in the Argentinian style, you gotta sweat it. My suggestion <laughs> these days is like you shave your your chest, so all the hair is not gonna interfere on the on the shirt and things like that. And just you gotta go in the ring. You know what I mean? And and, and that was that that is my my the way at least the way the way I do. It. But I totally understand that that a t-shirt like like breaks the sweat, breaks the. Uh, even the, the, the nut of the, the tie, he gets sweaty too. I mean, the, the, the whole right. package, you know. But I just, 
I want to sweat it out. Just it, it is what it is. You wear outdoors, you know. Again, like like you said, I mean, you can wear a, a nice shirt. I mean, open whatever, but you know, a t-shirt for me, it's just it's it's, it's kind of like like too much. Uh, well, you know, that's where the word and, hot Latin comes from, Diego. That's why we call them hot Latins. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. One of the things I found too is paying attention to the material that you're wearing because a nice wool jacket might look pretty when it's you know cold outside, but that's not something you want to wear on a summer day. So you know linens, lighter materials, you know I would say I mean, like, in particular, me particular is like I sweat no matter if it's like 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 one degree or like ninety. <laughs> it could be like snowing outside and it's like summertime for me. So I always pick everything lighter. A coat or, or yeah. material light. I cannot wear a beautiful winter coat and show right. people. No way. No, no me, but I mean. The things we have to worry about, right? Good news. Our Remy Lewis from Northern California, who was detained at a very important business meeting, has appeared miraculously. Welcome to the closet, Remy. We're so Thank glad you, you have some time to come with us. We have missed you. So we're going to hit you right up with two questions. Go ahead, Michael. All right. The first question, Remy, is how do you manage sweating at a dog show in a suit? Ooh, that's a tough one. Again, back to being a fluffier boy. Uh, we, we, we sweat a lot, especially running <laughs> around with, uh, with those water dogs. Um, I, I always keep a paper towel in my pocket. And then, uh, again, from water dogs, I, I always have my sponge that I sponge them with. So if you catch me, you might see me wiping my forehead <laughs> with that sponge that I'm sponging my water dogs with. Uh, or I, I like linen. I wear a lot of linen, linen shirts and, and linen uh, jackets, uh, seersucker to keep me uh, cool. Love that. Other question I'm going to give you is how do you coordinate outfit colors, especially for a particular dog? So in your case, Portuguese Ooh. water dogs. Um, yeah, I, I try to go with lighter suits, all, always lighter suits, just because uh, my dogs are always all black. So I try to go lighter suits. Um, but I, I, but I do make the mistakes sometimes because I do like the darker suits, even though. So if I, yeah. I do, I try to, you know, step to the side or, or get out of the way because I still do like some of the, the darker suits. Because you still got to worry about how you look too, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So our, our next question and, um, is going to be another opinion question. What are your thoughts on tattoos and whether they're visible, whether or not you have them? Let's start with Phil on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Okay. Well, first of all, I have no tattoos. Okay. What? Never, never. Can you believe that? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Um, Doc. But uh, you know what? I, um, I consider myself kind of conservative, old fashioned, but, but that's a personal choice. You know what I mean? Yep. I think, I think people should be able to do whatever they want. Um, I will say this, some friends of mine, uh, I have been very surprised when, if you go to vacation or something, they got some tattoos, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't see them, you know? Yep. And uh, yep. for me, I guess as a professional, that's kind of where the, the if I was going to have them, I probably would lean toward that, you know, make, being professional. Um, Absolutely. I think, but I do think it's just a personal choice. And a lot, yep. I'll go on real quick. Along with a personal choice like that, you, you have to be able to accept the consequences of your choices. So, so if you're going to ha have a tattoo that's visible, you're going to have to, you don't have to accept someone being rude or uh, upsetting about it, but you know, you have to accept if somebody kind of stares for a second or, or, or does those things. So, but I, I'm, I'm big on personal choice and personal decision and, and that's where I leave it. And I'm afraid of needle. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. so the answer then is, even though you didn't do it when you were younger, if you were like Michael's age or Peter's age, would you consider doing it now? Or is it something that just doesn't appeal to you at all? It's just not my thing. I mean, I have okay. three, I have three grown children. The youngest is 29. Um, they all have, uh, well, not all. I guess my middle son doesn't. But the, the oldest and the youngest, they have some tattoos. Um, I let my son do it. Not shouldn't say let. He did it. Big sleeve on the arm, you know, when he was in college. And uh, I told him, I did say this to my son. I said, you're going to regret that one day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a couple thousand bucks later, he got it They're removed. Not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> They're not cheap. <laughs> but, yeah, so. Love that. All right, Diego, what are your thoughts on tattoos? 
Yeah, okay, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. I really respect everybody, and, and those tattoos, they look absolutely beautiful, and these days, they make such a great job. They are such a great art. You know what I mean, an artist, and, and by the way, my, my, uh, my sister's uh, husband is a well-known tattoo guy down in Europe, in Spain, and he's amazing. Unfortunately, I'm very, very conservative. No tattoos. No, 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 no at all. Uh, we broke with my profession, and then you know what I mean. Always, sometimes it can go a little down, and and, and the judge can see, and even probably the judge got a tattoo, and he is perfectly perfect. You know what I mean. And and every time I see people with tattoo. I admire, you know what I mean? It's not like, yeah. but me personal sitting there, they don't pack me up with the, with the thing there. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, 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 no. I'm very, very conservative, very conservative with that. So, so that's, I, that's I, I, I leave it that way, I leave it that way. <laughs> Peter, how about you? Well, I actually do have a single tattoo that is up on my shoulder that I got in the long, long agos of uh, the Florida circuit and going to Ybor City one night. We're all good from kind of poor choice. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm either way about tattoos. You know, this one I got is a stupid little thing, kind of from college time. It's, you're not going to see it unless I'm wearing a tank top or, you know, something like that. Even if I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt at a dog show, it's not visible. If you're a tattoo person, you're a tattoo person. You're putting tattoos on your body. You're going to put them where you want. And I think like Phil said, if that's what you're going to do, then and you're going to enter this sport and you're going to have some that are visible. You know, you see a lot of girls, they have, you know, skirts and short dresses on. They'll have them on their legs or their foot. Those are kind of basic to me. It's the ones where you got, you know, coming up your neck to your face, a big sleeve will be very visible. But if you're a person getting a sleeve, I hope you're making that choice because that was <clears throat> for a long time. And it should mean something to you. It shouldn't just go oh, slap it on. It should be something that is meaningful. And I know plenty of people that have big tattoos on them, but they're not that visible unless they're you know, in a tank top or something. So I say to each their own. Love that. Oh, wait a minute, Michael. Just a minute, Michael. Uh, a little revelation from Michael Hill, please. So I have tattoos myself, <laughs> <laughs> which I do appreciate a good tattoo. Um, my perspective, though, when talking to people about it is like in other industries outside of the dog show world, like, for example, in the fashion world, there are some times when you'll have a designer who wants you to keep your tattoos visible. And there's other times where they want them all covered up. So for somebody who's trying to make that decision about whether or not to cover up, sometimes it's about gauging your audience and your situation. If you do need to cover them up, there's a great product called Derma Blend, which you can get online that you match to your skin tone and you apply it onto over the tattoo without having to actually remove your tattoo. You can have your tattoos hidden for a day. So you can put it in on any part of your body and you can have them not visible if you need to for an event. Why Make a note, know Phil, let's see where we gotta go. Phil. Make a note, Diego. Yes, yes. <laughs> Dropping knowledge left and right. <laughs> That's what all this right. is all about. We have to inform as well as entertain. There you go. That's right. There you go. I think all right. that, like we all said, I think we all agree that that whole thing, it's just a personal choice. You know, exactly. if, you, if it's your thing, it's your thing. And it's one of those things I think where also with the strategy like at a dog show, you're making decisions about trying to make your dog look their best. So if your tattoos are going to be distracting from your dog, just from a strategic standpoint, I don't think that's a wise, you know, thing to add into the equation if you're trying to showcase your dog. So it's not about the tattoos being wrong. It's just about what's going to make your dog look their best. One thing I've noticed on a lot of young women is when they go to, to bend over their dog and say they're wearing like a, a, a top of some kind and a skirt or a pair of slacks and 
suddenly you just get that little piece of skin right across the, the, the small of their back. And lo and behold, I have seen some very interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our secrets. <laughs> all right. Next question is going to be, what is the appropriate amount or style of facial hair? Diego, why don't you start with that? I don't understand. No comprende. <laughs> <laughs> When did, when did you start all this? Hey, when did you start all this? Is that quarantine hair? Or no, these I have it all the time, these. Forever since and ever? the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You know what it is? I think since it went white, I can really see it. <laughs> that was very nice, Phil. <laughs> I never noticed till it went white, Diego. I hate that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell him myself, though. I had a haircut the other day, and there was a lot of white hair hitting the floor. So I, I have to... <laughs> I tell Move, moving on from the white hair. <laughs> the question, Diego, is what is the appropriate amount or style of hair? How much is the, is the right amount to show on your face? Hair? Oh, just, just no, no, no. I don't like to see too much, you know what I mean? Even, I mean, again, particular myself, you know, when I see these days, a lot of the, the men that do such a great job on those long beards and they look really trimmed to perfection. And even you go to the barber shop and they do such a, you know, beautiful job. Yeah. Just for me, it's just as much as clean as you can. You know what I mean? You, you don't yeah. want, I mean, like I, in, in, our, in our profession, you don't want to disturb that beautiful shirt, that beautiful tie. The, the, the tie. You know what I mean? These days, you know, they can hang in those things, uh, those long beers. I mean, everything, you know, it's hard. Yep. You couldn't yeah, see the pocket squares. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, what do you think about facial hair? Well, I'm a person that really can't grow facial hair, so <laughs> I don't run into this that often. Um, but I kind of agree with Diego, too. I mean, whatever style you want, if you want to have a full beard, have it. But keep it, keep it clean and tight. You know, again, we're running around. We're getting hot. We're dressing up. So you don't want to, again, distract from that. I think if you have this big burly beard like that's a great beard to have if you want it but i think you're you probably should trim it in because you're gonna be sweating through it it's gonna be you know yeah. attractive and like you said can be distracting mm -hmm. to your dog you know taking you away from that experience like a bad tattoo would so again personal preference on how you want to style it but keep it clean love that bill what about you um it's a boring answer, but same thing, you know, personal choice. I did, there was a period a few years ago where I grew a beard for a couple of months. Um, I didn't mind how it looked, but um, my, my skin would get dry or, would, you know, get irritated. And it, it, in order to do like Diego says, to, to, and Pete, to, to have them look nice and healthy, that's a, that's a lot of work, you know. Right. It, it's not, it, and to keep your skin from getting flaky, that, that's a lot of work. So I'm lazy. <laughs> in some things <laughs> so i'm not gonna put that much work into it see the short work hair smart not hard <laughs> yeah, work smarter not harder that's right that's my motto but love yeah, that again, face that stuff so that's all personal choice for me yep i think that Ma makes sense michael have you ever grown a beard or a mustache or anything i had a like a goatee thing going for a minute in college and i don't I don't intend to ever go back to that personally. <laughs> but, you know, we try things. We, we see how they look, and then you decide, maybe that's not for me. <laughs> right, right. Again, it's all personal preference, and I think if you can grow it and grow it well, and if you, like, for some people, they just really enjoy it. Like, they enjoy having the beard and conditioning it and trimming it. I barely want to groom a dog, let alone groom a, my facial hair, so... <laughs> And That's then there I are some it. men who just grow facial hair just like the rest of the hair on their body profusely. And they can get yeah. a mustache and a, and a beard going in, like, no time. And, right. um, well, un but unfortunately, yeah, I, I, if I don't shave every day, I mean, a couple of days looks it's pretty rough. This is a week's worth of growth on my face right here. 
Wow. <laughs> How strong after, that's after, coming after in. Puberty, after puberty, Peter, maybe it'll change. <laughs> A few more years. We'll keep our, we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, next question is going to be, how do I coordinate outfit colors, especially for a particular dog? Peter, why don't you answer that one first? Well, when it comes to colors, I'm a bad person to ask because look what I'm... <laughs> look what I'm That's seen. why we went with you. <laughs> um, I think it all really comes down to the kind of pants you're wearing because that's what's going to block the view. You know, that's good. That, you know, while you're moving, while you're standing. So... You know, you want to kind of coordinate, I'd say, your pants more to the color dog you're wearing. You know, darker dog, maybe a lighter pair of pants, vice versa. Um, especially if you have one specific dog that you're showing and you're going to show that one dog. You know, other people, they're showing multiple dogs. That pair of pants or that skirt, that dress, it's gonna, right. it might end up clashing with something. So if you want to keep it simple... You know, I'd say either a, a light or dark, depending upon the dogs you're showing, just so it, the contrast isn't there. You know, contrast, I would, right. when I would show my flat coats, I would always think, like, don't wear black pants, don't wear a black suit, wear something right. lighter, because especially when you take a picture, it's just one giant black mess. So, <laughs> you know. Don't want that. I, I say focus more on your pants than what, you know, shirt, tie, jacket you're wearing, because that's not going to be in view as much as the yeah. pants are, or your skirts and dresses. Right, right. Phil, what about you? Um, Pete's got it down. Um, you know, the, 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 the breed is very specific. If you're showing a truck full, you can't always do that, but we all have our priority dogs, typically right. during the course of a year. Um, and, uh, and you got to be conscious of that. Conversely, um, light colors, dark dogs, etc. I will have to go to the confessional and say there's been that class dog or two that may be a dark color and have a poor top line, and I might need that major really bad, and I might wear those brown yep. pants and that brown jacket. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Don't let them look so too close. There, there's strategy both ways, you know. Um, yeah, that's you, a great you can, point. Uh, you you can work it both ways, but uh, love that co colors. You know, here again, when, when they stopped making those clothes that had the matching animals with them, the girl, I, I had to really start thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Diego, how do you decide colors? I just always, I mean, I always try to stay as classic as I can, even if I go to lighter colors or, or, or stronger colors. You know, I mean, in the pen, I like, or the majority of the dogs that I show, most of the time, if I stay classic with just a little bit in the darker colors, it always looks, it, it always looks good. But it, yeah. I used to, when I was young, I dressed and it was like very flowery and very, you know, eye-catching. But, but I think you still, you dress and you can stay classic with lighter colors. It depends on the dogs or, or a little stronger uh, colors, you know? Uh, and, and again, I mean, if you gotta, if you think you gotta, I mean, I always like to bump up those dogs. You know what I mean? When, when, when I wear something, you know, uh, yeah. that's, that's what I, the, the way that I stay, you know? Love that. And awesome. what about you, Michael? You show dogs. I do. And you know, one of my favorite things, I mean, I agree with it completely with what they're saying. And one of the things I do, cause usually I'm going with just my personal dog or one dog. I like to do a color that's still neutral, but slightly contrasting to kind of frame the dog out if it's a dog that that works well for. So I go to something like a light blue often because that also goes well with my skin tone and I'm thinking about that too. <laughs> See, okay, priorities, priorities, priorities. Okay. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I can honestly say that thought rarely crosses my mind. <laughs> 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 well, you almost have a favorite color to wear. What's your favorite color to wear, Phil? I, I like blue. I'm, okay. Uh, I, I like And that's your kennel and, name, correct? Of, yeah, exactly. It's my favorite color has been since I was a little kid. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I'm a blue guy. Okay, Peter? I like bright. I'm very bright when it comes to a lot of my clothes. Especially okay. when we're in the summertime. You got to have fun with it. It's the fall and winter, I'll, you know pick fall and winter colors. When we're in the summertime, I'm 
picking brighter colors. And Diego, so, what's your favorite color? I work, I work for Phil Booth, so I I, I <laughs> with blue color. <laughs> well, just I have all the clients Booth, right yeah. there check out to Phil Booth, that's all. Uh, oh, God help me, yeah. Uh, favorite outfit colors just personally to wear? Uh, purple. Purple is you. Purple and Sear Sucker. Those are my two, my two go-to colors. Winter colors. There you go. And yeah, green colors. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Purple and Sear Sucker. Okay. Love that. I have a question, Michael. May I ask everybody? Go ahead. I would like you each to personally define how much time it takes you in the morning to be dressed and ready for work. <laughs> the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I want to hear Diego's answer first. No, don't do that. You got a <laughs> sundial. It's a, it's a sundial you time, Diego. <laughs> No, I'm I'm pretty pretty fast, but by oh. all the time I'm going back to of course. I'm, I'm going outside of the motorhome, I'm coming in, I look at myself on the mirror, I say, no, no, different time. And then different <laughs> it takes me probably I will say forty minutes, forty five minutes. Start to finish, problem. Diego, I'm not buying that. Let's go. Start to finish, <laughs> honestly. You get up, you take you, from the time you get up to the time you walk out that door, how long is it? I try to be done, not, not much obsessive, you know what I mean? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> no, no, yes, 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 it takes me, I mean, an, an hour, I need an hour at least. <laughs> at least, okay, we got that. <laughs> Remy, how about you? Uh, well, in my career, and I work in tech, so everyone always wears jeans and t-shirts, so... No, we're talking about when the time you're as ready to show uh, your dog, from the time you get up, you ready dog. So I, I won't lie. I'm actually a quick, like, 30 minutes. Like, brush my teeth, shower, brush my teeth, and, and out the door. I'm, I'm pretty quick in the morning. So you Nighttime haven't, is you haven't I'm accounted for getting dressed, Remy. Yeah, but I, I like to, I lay everything out the night before. It's like okay. first day of school. So you're, like, excited, you know, like, what you want to wear. So it's already all mapped out. So then I can just get ready to go. Half an hour. Okay. All right. Bill, how about you? Oh. <laughs> The, the longest thing in the morning for me is for the water to get hot in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I've traveled with you. I know how that works. <laughs> Not long. I mean, uh, uh, you know, start to finish, I could probably get it done in 15 if I was pushed. But, you know, 20 minutes or so, I should be able to get done. Not much longer than that. Perfect. Peter, how about you? Yeah, I'm probably in the 20 to 30 minute mark. I mean, it, it depends on how rushed I am. If it's like dogs are first in in the morning, you know, I'm probably not going to go outside and exit dogs at six o'clock dressed. I'll probably do that real quick, take care of things, go inside, and then I can be ready in probably 15 minutes if I'm really pushed. Again, my clothes are all laid out. I've already spent the time before I left to put everything together. So there's no <laughs> thinking oh, which this and that, it's done. So I just shower and hair and dress and go. And Michael? You know, to be honest, I actually like to shower the night before because my hair works best when I shower the night before and then sleep on it and then it just wakes up like this. Mm -hmm. So if I do that and shave the night before and have my outfit out, it's just putting the clothes on and going out the door. So it can be in less than 10 minutes pretty easy. Oh my! And so when are, you sleep. All, <laughs> when are you putting on all these creams and hair products that you talked about? I mean, yeah, well, usually the creams go pretty quickly because it's just like a dab, 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 and it's like a sunscreen at the same time. So it's you know, I dab, I dab, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking the Jetsons when you walk through that machine and it throws your clothes on you and puts all the stuff yeah. in your hair. And you just come out the other side all dressed. <laughs> Love that. How I don't like getting up in the morning, so I try How to go. How fascinating. Five. How fascinating. Do we have any more questions today, Michael? I think that's it. I think we've given the world a very in-depth perspective on menswear in the dog world. Okay. Well, you know, we have some questions from some interested listeners and oh, viewers, right. I should say. 
We have one from somebody who would like to know, Phil, could you please explain your pockets that are lined and perhaps show us one? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, as I said, the, the, the tailor that I use for some of my nicer stuff, um, and I don't do this with all of them, so it, it's kind of a, on the nicer suits. He will put some Velcro in there along with a, uh, like a, a heavy, any kind of fabric. I don't know. I'm not a fabric guy, but a heavier fabric with Velcro on it also. I don't have the liner with me. As I said, they're all out packed in my suitcase already. But you can see here maybe, let me see if I can get this so I can show you the, the actual pocket of the suit. Um, it has Velcro inside the pocket. There's a piece here. Oh, yeah. Piece in the corner, and then a piece on this corner. And that you stick that liner in there, and it's Velcroed in, and your pocket will go back over it like that. Uh, works out great for, you know, keeping the bait that gets a little moist or something from coming through your good clothes. That's, that's a great solution. Oh, and okay. um, the thing I guess that's the most interesting is, wow, does that save wear and tear on, your, on the pockets of your clothing? Yeah, and your dry clean, I mean, unless you're out sweating like Diego um, all the time, you don't have to, you don't have to get them clean, cleaned every week. You know, the jackets might go, you cut your dry cleaning a little bit because that, I've just found that uh, even with good clothes and quality materials, dry cleaners, even the best dry cleaner in the world, you, it, you yeah. have to clean them all the time. It tears them up. It does. It wears out on the fabric. And, and have any, any of you other gentlemen ever thought about doing something that clever or... We just ruin our clothes, right? I just put a Ziploc bag just, in my pocket. I just buy another jacket. Yeah, yeah I'd I just go buy something else. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy Warbucks. We got yeah, Daddy right. Warbucks. Just buy another jacket. Well, there's one solution in, the, in our throwaway world. There it is, Peter, throwing those clothes out all over oh, the I have, place. I have jackets that have holes in them on the inside. I <laughs> went to my closet and ripped them up. I just have my, my dry cleaner, tailor, just... Stitch, stitched them up and stitched the inside of the pocket. Who's looking in my pocket? I had sport oh, coats. That I, I had don't even want to contemplate that one. <laughs> I had sport coats that I had put duct tape on duct tape. in the lining <laughs> and ripped or something, and I was on a show oh, for a weekend. So, Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Whatever. We make it work. <laughs> and uh, we have another question. Uh, by the way, that one came um, from, a, I believe a woman asked the question. Her name was, I think, Alec. And it's Alec who has this question. Alec Diego, he was very impressed with the way you put a sock around your shoe. Yes. Keep them safe. Can you explain? He wants to know how big is that sock to go around your shoe? I mean, it's like a sock, like for an A, A, you know what I mean? A. But is it, is it a calf high sock? Is it an ankle sock? No, no, no. It's a long, it's, it's one of the long, long socks. Okay. And I put them all my all my shoes. I put them on, on, on those socks, and I put the, the insider. You know what I mean? That yes. you can buy the shoe, everywhere. The shoe, right, the shoe trees. And yeah. by the way, if anybody didn't notice, um, Amy Gravy, one of the publishers of the Canine Chronicle, went out of her way to put some footnotes in at the at the low where the um, video is featured to tell people about things like the shoe horns, some of the products you were using, and other things that. Um, our, our viewers can go back and take a look and find the very same things that you were using. And that's kind of where some of these questions come from. So yours are just really nice kind of knee-high socks that you keep and you put your shoes in the knee-high sock after you have put the shoe horn in the shoe, correct? Not the yes. shoe horn, the shoe tree. The shoe tree in the... In. Well, it was a big hit with a lot of our viewers. And Phil, your pockets were very interesting to a lot of folks, so you never well, know. Yeah, you never know. I might... I, I, I... Yeah, that's a great idea. So <laughs> you learn are. something new every day. And if people come up to you and want to check out your pockets, I guess that's why. I guess that means they're watching, right? <laughs> uh, well, well we, I think that we do. We do have everybody watching. Well, this was another fascinating experience. Well, thank you, everybody, for giving us feedback on your menswear questions. And thank you to Phil Booth, Remy Smith-Lewis, Peter Kubax, and Diego Garcia, for sharing your opinions on how you present yourself in the dog show world. And I'm going to give it to you, Elaine, to wrap us up from here. Well, I think the thing that we have all learned by presenting the men of the dog world is everybody's interested in the men of the dog world. The women watched, the men watched, probably everybody else watched. The dogs howled, and they all had a great time. 
So we want to thank you so much, and we look forward to some future experiences with each of you. And this is Elaine Lessig on behalf of the Canine Chronicle on their webpage and Facebook page, thanking you for joining me in the vault and also saying to you, we'll see you very soon next time. And thank you on behalf of the Canine Chronicle. <laughs>